Hey guys, so I have a special video for all of you. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how INFPs express all eight of the cognitive functions. And I'm going to bring in a really incredible resource in order to do this. And it is a website that talks about how all 16 of the personality types express all eight of the cognitive functions in a lot of rich detail and nuance. I'm very impressed by this website, so I can't wait to show you what it is. And I'm going to relate my own personal experience to, as an INFP myself, to this website. And what I hope is that you get to have insight into the workings of the INFP, whether you are an INFP or you know an INFP in your life. And I want to let you know that in the past um, that I had struggled with depression before, and I've been told that I had a naturally depressed brain. And I believed that. I believed that. But one day I chose not to believe it anymore. And so I've written an article about how I was able to overcome my depression. And if you're interested in reading that, I have a, uh, a link to the article down below. And I also have a video on my other channel in which I talk about if you're feeling really overwhelmed with a lot of anxiety, what are small steps that you could take in order to reduce the anxiety so that you could start to find your way forward. So this is the website that I was talking about earlier. It's from the World Socionics Society. And... It talks about how each type expresses all eight of the cognitive functions in pretty rich detail. So they call this type here the ethical intuitive integrator. And I believe, personally believe that this type corresponds with the INFP from MBTI. I just want to let you know, not everybody agrees that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between socionics types and MBTI types, but there's a lot of people who do believe there is, and that includes myself. So I believe that this type corresponds with the MBTI INFP. And as you could see, uh, this type is called the ethical intuitive integrator. So ethical meaning uh, feeling. And you can see that it, it's in the beginning of the title. So that means that the feeling function is, um, is first. And then you have intuitive, which is intuition. And what that means is that intuition is the secondary function and integrator means introvert. So to me, that is an INFP. And they lovingly call this type the counselor. And I think that's really fitting. I literally personally work as a mental health counselor. So I think INFPs could have a quite natural counselor kind of presence because we tend to be rather gentle and sensitive and receptive to others and willing to hear people out, just like really fully uh, listen to them. And Dr. Darinardi did research on INFP brains and finds that INFP brains are brains of good listeners, like really take the time to absorb and process the emotional content of what people are saying. So yeah, so I think the counselor corresponds well. The first function I want to talk about here is introverted feeling, which socionics calls relations. So you can see relations is on the top of the screen right here, right? Um, so it says this, central to the INFP are their personal sentiments and attitudes towards people and events surrounding them and the demands of their conscience. They're in a persistent state of subjective evaluation, trying to assess how they feel. <laughs> so for me, that really um, describes how we operate pretty well. Certainly how I personally operate. I feel like every moment I, I'm always shifting through my emotional states and very hyper aware of my attitude. Like I, I have this hyper awareness towards my sense of selfhood. This is not the same thing as self-awareness. I think any type has equal access to that, like if they were to develop themselves. But I think 
in introvert feeling, it comes from a hyper uh, a sense, uh, sensitivity to uh, our own subjective um, state, our own emotional state. Yeah, I'm always shifting through, always fe- feeling how do I feel towards different things, towards different people. So they tend to form attitudes based on their personal ideals of goodness and then strive to act sincerely to these sentiments. Uh, This provides them with strong ideals of what is a decent person, and they tend to hold themselves to nearly quixotic standards. So, you know, introvert feeling is an introverted function. So it's a very subjective function. It kind of filters everything in terms of its sense of what is goodness, uh, what is decent, uh, what is sincere, what is authentic, and everything's um, seen within this internal framework. Um, so this is certainly my experience of insured feeling, holding myself to nearly quixotic standards, right? So it's an introvert function. So introvert functions kind of fight reality. And one reality there is out in a world, um, object like reality as in something that is objective, right? is that there are human limit- limitations, right? So if you're holding yourself to really high standards, you're kind of like ignoring what those limitations are. <laughs> um, so it could be really constraining. Like I remember earlier in my life that I kind of, I felt like I was holding myself rather rigidly. And um, I know that from deep down in my heart, I, I want to do what is good. And I want to hold myself accountable to um, high standards of what a person should be. But <laughs> um, later on, I, I felt I learned to be able to loosen things up. It's not, not, it's not that I'm not striving to be a good person. I still am. But I find that this mode of operating is way too constraining and way too limiting, lim- limiting that might prevent me from actually um, achieving what I want to achieve. So, but certainly I think this really comes from a place of being just sensitive, like being sensitive towards others. I think introvert feeling could be very much driven by a sense of guilt and a sense of self-consciousness. It's not a bad thing. I think this is just how it operates. And because of this hyper self-sensitivity and awareness, it could feel like <laughs> it's really constraining. It's, it's, it doesn't always like feel like such a great place to be necessarily. This, this comes from a place of being empathetic towards others, wanting to be understanding towards them. And that's, that's where it's coming from. So it's really like life is about uh, balance, I find. like th- These are actually good traits, but then it's good to, be, to balance this trait out with another trait that's a bit more extroverted and not like so constraining in a way, something that has more of an open energy. I'm kind of alluding to extrovert intuition here. And uh, that brings balance to the personality. You know, I, I start to feel better when, when I could get into the any state. Introvert functions get very abstract. So like if we're cutting ourselves out from the external world, these standards, these internal standards start to like really build up like a really rigid structure and yeah and that does not tend to be healthy i think there's a little bit of like expert thinking in there so every function the very much you could feel the impact of the the opposite function inside so if you look at expert thinkers they obviously hold people to standards in a very, you know, very clear kind of way. On a piece on the outside, we're very like easygoing and, and, and flexible with things, but <laughs> we're, we're a reverse ESTJ. So inside is where there's these really high um, standards and expectations and not just towards ourselves, probably towards like close relationships too, as well. Our expectations of how people should be. Uh, yeah, there's, there could be a sense of disappointment with our own actions, not living up to our potential. So one thing I learned is like um, other types are not as strong when being able to see what their potential is. 
And it happens like INFPs tend to be very good at seeing potential. So it's easy for us to see how we're not measuring up to it, but it really helps to put things into perspective that other types may have a harder time to see their potential. Um, and so we, we, we are blessed with the ability to see what the potential, what, what kind of potential that we have. So we don't have to necessarily be so hard on ourselves about it. So when applied to people, this promotes social selectivity. INFP is being motivated to form close, meaningful, and stable bonds with those they feel to be of desirable character and avoiding those they feel to have bad intentions. They may tend towards idealism and may be reluctant to form their deepest, closest connections with just about anyone. So I think like introverted functions, they tend to be rather conservative because everything corresponds with an internal image. And usually the internal image has high standards, right? So we don't want to just form bonds with just about anybody. And we might have like an idea of what is good character or, or bad character because we have that internal, we have that internal standard. And, you know, it's good to have that, but it's good to have the balance too. And I experienced this myself. So th this really much describes my life. Like I, I've, I tend to keep my distance from a lot of people and I'm very, 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 very selective about who I let into my inner world. And it's in, in, in a sense, it's not very deliberate because I just tend to have that internal hypersensitivity. So like when people come close to me, then I, I kind of experience this hypersensitivity towards it. And I really, based on my feelings, kind of figure out like, uh, do I want to connect with someone or not? And I think it's over time, I've learned to balance this out with just a like, greater sense of openness with others, not necessarily just letting them into uh, my, my own internal world just right away. But like, I think INFPs could become, they could start to feel lonely because um, there, there, there could be so many barriers to entry into the, the INFPs world. And I think the, the issue with introverted functions is that it could, um, especially introverted feeling, introverted feeling, if it does not get input from extroverted functions, it tends towards fantasy. So it has an internal vision of like what is ideal in terms of relationships and who fits into that. But then it's without extroverted functions, it's kind of just like a fantasy in a way. It's like kind of it's a lot of stuff that's in our heads and, um, and, and we might think someone belongs into that, in that world, but they don't necessarily because there's the reality out there in a the world, you know, reality could be kind of uh, disheartening to us, but it's a good balance to our own personalities. And again, I want to say that this is normal for INFPs to experience that we, we kind of build an internal fantasy of how things should work. And when it kind of goes on overdrive, <laughs> then it doesn't feel that great, right? And then when we kind of open things up, we kind of bring balance. And I want to say that there's personality types that have the opposite problem. So they might have intrude feelings of blind spot and they have different struggles from our own, right? So it's all like a matter of perspective. Uh, instead of they might keep, will keep, I was just talking about this, instead they'll keep most people as friendly acquaintances and spend much of their time waiting for that spe special person who will be right for a romantic relationship, occasionally waiting so long as to not commit to anyone at all. So I think this talking about specifically romantic, that's definitely me. I'm not going to speak for every like INFP's experience. So INFP's are very like focused on the long-term aspects of things. I've challenged myself. I, I challenged myself to kind of break out of this pattern. I'm not just talking about romantic, but just in terms of friendship. So I, I decided to go to Austin, Texas uh, for a week and with a, a specific mission in mind that helps me to break out of this pattern. And it goes like this, that I said that I'm going to form friendships with people, even if it's going to be brief, right? Because I'm only going to be there for a week. Just talk with different people and with the idea of learning something from them, coming from that expert intuition uh, curiosity. So before when I travel, I tend to <laughs> go full on social anxiety and I don't talk with anybody. But 
but I decided just to just uh, be really open during this trip, and it was very, um, uh, it was significant. It really made a difference for me in my life in terms of being able to open up to others. So in, in each case, they create appropriate psychological distance with each individual according to their inner compass, sharing themselves completely and honestly with those they feel close to, while being more reserved and distant with those they're less sure of. Yeah, so that certainly is um, me. And when I observe other INPs, I think this is the case. You get to see like there's this general tendency to be more reserved uh, compared to other types. It's like we're kind of all living in our, in our own world. We're like little hermits in a way. So let's go on to the next function here. So this is ideas. Ideas correspond with expert intuition. So as an aid to their leading function, INFPs like to keep an open mind to the numerous possibilities. In tandem with their main approach of assessing the inner character of others, this provides a sense of good faith to judgment. Instead of judging someone on their superficial actions or deeds, they try to grasp a person's potential to be good or they have room for growth. So I could see that the nuance to this um, website because you can almost see like there's a different message here from when it's talking about introverted feeling because introverted feeling kind of looks at things from the lens of good and bad. But then this function, expert intuition, has like a non-judgmental character to it. So it, it's, it has an open approach it tries to suspend judgment. So I think it even says that later on here. In a way, they're able to largely see the best in others and indirectly draw the goodness out of those they care about. So they're less likely to cut off their uh, relationships with others in which they have had a bad experience tentatively and definitely delaying character judgment. There we go. Until they're sure of the person's potential. So like already has like a different flavor from introverted feeling. Um, so this function... It's just very open and wants to see that potential in others. So it doesn't matter if on the surface they seem like good or bad, right? How can you figure out what is good in, in the person? Um, and I think like with the development of this function, like you could see like that counselor aspect of the INP show, show through being, being able to see people's potential while, while being grounded in that introverted feeling of being sensitive, being sensitive and emp empathic. I, yeah, I think this is certainly true. And it could also certainly be an issue too, because we may not like have good boundaries when it comes to this. So if people come to us um, and they want to share their story or something they're, they're struggling with, then we, we really do pay attention and, and listen to them. But at the same time, we may have trouble pushing people away. And even if people are showing um, red flags, for instance, we kind of very much do delay the judgment of their character because it's always about like where they could potentially be in, in the future, right? Or like, or like we see that with expert intuition, there's another way to look at their story. There's another way to try to understand them. And um, so on the surface, it may seem that they're bad or they're troubled, but um, there's more to them than that, right? So I think that these are good qualities to have. At the same time, like if we're not um, pay objectively paying attention, so I guess if we're not paying attention to the thinking function, right? The thinking function is kind of more objective and not necessarily having to be judge judgmental either. It's just picking up on facts about the other person. And sometimes we need to be able to draw that boundary and say, like, you know, objectively, it's not um, healthy to have this person in my life or to the extent that this person's in my life right now, right? And uh, it doesn't have to come from, like, a harsh judgment. It's just because it's good to be able to try to preserve our energy. And we might uh, <laughs> allow our energy to get sucked dry. In the same way... INFPs are open to new ideas and may enjoy a wide range of eclectic, if even quirky interests, often being open to the potential these areas offer to improve their lives. However, this also results in a noncommittal nature of INFPs who prefer to try to arrange a different experiences walk in life. 
um, rather than commit themselves to a particular path and cut out alternatives, and this could result in a meandering or wandering effect, causing us to drift be between different activities and phases, trying to trying things out but not staying long in any one thing. Oh, so this is the story of my life. So, so if you uh, look at tarot, I don't know. I feel like, especially earlier in my life, I could identify with the fool, right? The fool, or I guess another archetype is the wanderer. I don't know if that's from tarot, from another thing, um, the I Ching or whatever, but like th those are like INFP archetypes earlier in your life. So there's like no sense of underlying structure in the life. It's just like we're kind of like, we're just, just kind of wandering through it and, and without like much of a plan. So I would barely have a plan back in, and that's, you know, not even that long ago, maybe just even like a few years ago, um, that I would not even have a plan for my day. Like I would wake up and not really have that much of an idea of what's going to happen, what's going to, what I'm going to do. What people like about it is that I'm able to roll with anything, right? And if difficulties are, arise, I'm able to roll with the punches pretty well. I could adapt while we using my expert intuition function. I think people might have been frustrated by the lack of like structure or decision making in that case. Yeah. And in terms of my curiosity, I'm, I'm led by my intellectual curiosity. So I just remember, you know, back in high school, like there's like this ICJ and she with, in terms of elective, she stuck with art from freshman year to senior year. And then for me, every semester, I just switched from one thing to the other, not like fully developing anything. So art, poetry, and then whatever. And then the thing is with extra intuition, the benefit is that extra intuition learns really fast. So what people have commented before is like how quickly I could pick up on things, but then I don't like really maintain it. The train just runs as steam. There's no sense of like uh, discipline behind it. So after that intellectual curiosity kind of wears away, there's no like underlying discipline that helps maintain uh, me to keep, keep on track on, in developing something to a kind of fuller potential. So expert intuition could kind of lead to the, a bit of shakiness, right? But it's a pretty good start to kind of get out of introvert feeling. And I think expert intuition is also a key to get into expert sensing too, because extra sensing and extra intuition kind of go in the same direction in terms of being uh, extra perceiving functions. So it helps us to, with extra intuition, to literally explore the world more when we come, become curious about it, when we're locked into that introvert feeling and introvert sensing safety world. Um, it can feel very comfortable, but very stifling. And when we get into extra intuition, that helps us to be able to explore the world more. So I just want to comment on the profile so far as a whole. And just from what I see, it seems like a pretty good description. I'm going to continue to have videos on this topic. I'm going to cover the other functions. Um, I think what may be missing is the fiery aspects of introvert feeling that are not very apparent on the surface of the INFP because we have an introvert thinking role function. So we may come off as like rather detached, but there's a really fire, fiery introvert feeling inside. It's like there's, there's a candle within us that, that really drives us with a lot of passion when we get really into something, maybe even a bit zealous. So one form of motivation for us is expert intuition with that intellectual curiosity, but something could kind of light us up like a fire and, yeah, I think that's the only thing that's really missing there. The only other comment I want to say is that um, I think INPs have a very deep well of caring that may not be as obvious on the surface. And what people find very helpful about us is that we could be very supportive. We could act in a very supportive manner. And if we just let more people know, if we kind of extended ourselves out to other people more rather than to keep ourselves closed. I think people can really appreciate it. 